Hello, I am Stephanie and I am an artist living in France. Welcome to my channel. Today is going to be a bit of a different video. I'm trying things out, I guess. First off, you see me, which never happens <laughs> or rarely. And then this video is 30 minutes long, which is a lot. I'm here today to show you the process of this painting here. So it's an octopus taking shelter in a tin can. There's actually a YouTube video, uh, probably several, where you can see octopi taking shelter in trash. This was made for a special challenge on Instagram, which is called Our Planet Week. And the first prompt is protect, which, um, yeah, <laughs> kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But more on that on Instagram. Let's keep it entertaining for YouTube, as YouTube doesn't really like us to talk about the doom of the human race. I'm going just to chit chat for half an hour while you see the process. I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, me drawing and painting. So I started this painting by drawing with ink um, and my dip pen. So that's always how I start my paintings nowadays, or at least the ink and watercolor ones, the illustrate the illustrative paintings. I never really am sure if you can use illustration because originally illustration really means to illustrate and it's more meant for books to illustrate. Uh, text or something that is said and in that sense I don't really like to use that way. I know most uh, most artists nowadays use illustration more loosely uh, but uh, yeah um, <laughs> I struggle with it. <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit narrow-minded about that word I guess. Anyway so yeah I always start with dip pen and ink. I've got so many questions about dip pen and ink whenever I use it but it's not rocket science. I have a bunch of nibs at home, uh, nothing really fancy. Most nibs I own, I bought them when I was 15, which is 20 years ago. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, I don't even know what nibs they are. I bought a few more here and there when I see them. I bought some in London when I was in residency just before the pandemic, um, which I quite like. But again, I really don't know too much. I, I think with nibs, it's always a bit difficult to know what you like before using them. A lot of draughtmen actually like nibs that are more flexible so you can um, so you can vary the thickness of the line. However, in my case, I like the line to be very regular and very thin. And in that sense, I prefer nibs that are on the hard sides and that are small. But again, that's my preference. Maybe you would love to draw and, you know, have lines that go thicker and thinner and then have some movement. So it's going to be really up to your own preference. Um, but yeah, just, just a few things to keep in mind, I suppose. Then um, I get a lot of questions about the ink I use and, uh, <laughs> you know, how it stays on paper when I paint over it. And it's just waterproof ink, so it's nothing magical. So the ink I personally am using is a German brand. I've talked about it again and again. Um, the brand is Rohrer und Klingner. Um, and uh, the specificity of that ink is that it's plastic free, it's made waterproof with the use of shellac. Um, most waterproof inks are actually made waterproof by the addition of some acrylic. Um, yeah, some acrylic resin. So yeah, that's basically the main difference. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of inks out there that are plastic free, waterproof inks that are plastic free. Um, I didn't really look into it. I found this one. I like it. I've been using it. <laughs> uh, I actually bought it when I bought the nips back 20 years ago, but I didn't really use it back then. And then, um, yeah, I found it again recently uh, and I really like it uh, recently a few years ago. Anyway, so yeah, the waterproof ink I personally use is that one. So it's uh, the Indian ink uh, from Rora and Klinger. They have also some uh, drawing inks that are made waterproof with acrylic. Um, just so you know, I think they're called drawing inks, but I'm not completely sure about that. 
um, but you can check on their website exactly how they make them waterproof. You do want a pigmented ink simply because it's going to last in time a lot longer and also because pigmented Indian ink are so much be more beautiful. They're kind of shiny and they're really, they have that rich, dark black to it. Um, it's actually super interesting because when you compare those crappy plastic fine liners and real Indian ink uh, with a dip pen or something like that and you just see the line and you compare it side by side, the difference is massive. Um, it's so much more beautiful. Um, you actually use the same type of ink, Indian ink, also in Rotring. Um, I actually have some and I've been cleaning them and I hope to use them maybe. Uh, I'm not too sure about it. Um, the cleaning part is always so much more annoying. That's why I tend to stick to dip pen and ink because the nib is so easy to clean. There's no clogging, you know, um, it lasts in time, a really long time. If you break the nib, it's just a small piece of metal that can easily be replaced. So I feel like it's a good, rather eco-friendly way of drawing. And, um, and I think it's just so elegant. <laughs> I don't know, there's something magical about dipping your pen into the ink and then drawing on paper. It's just, it's so beautiful. The gesture is really beautiful and that's what I love most about dip pen, ink and drawing. And yeah, that's what I like best. Um, another thing that I might note, um, so I'm watching the video at the same time that I talk so I can kind of know where I'm at. I always draw the outline of what I'm going to draw with ink first with a pencil. I prefer the hard pencil, so I think I'm using uh, 3H, which is a very hard um, pencil that doesn't leave a lot of mark. Um, and I like that because then you can erase when you make a mistake, you can readjust the composition, you can assess if it's big enough for the paper or too small or whatnot. Uh, so I always do a drawing first before attacking the ink. Uh, I might not do all the small details because of course I'm used to certain things so I don't need to draw every line with the pencil. However, if you do need to do that, I mean, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think it's important to feel confident in your work and if you need to go through the whole drawing with pencils first, I think that's fine. Uh, I don't think uh, you should think too much about it. Um, even digital artists, I have taken up a digital art class recently um, to make things, to make the story super, super short uh, because otherwise we're going to be sitting here for more hours <laughs> than we already are. Uh, I recently got an iPad for a job and uh, I've always kind of wanted an iPad just for Procreate and I just say kind of because I was just really curious about it. I saw an artist use it uh, in real life. He was showing us all the things you could do with Procreate. I was like, that looks really cool. I really want to try that out. But on the other hand, I really like the traditional approach. So this is why I never really bought an iPad and it's pretty expensive. But recently for a job I got an iPad so they paid maybe about 80% of it um, and uh, so I got an iPad and an iPad pencil, pencil, eye pencil, whatever it's called, that plastic pencil you use. Um, and I tried a bit and it, honestly it's quite difficult I think to do digital art when you come from the traditional art. I don't know, it's like a whole different way of thinking and building up an artwork. And then later on I was contacted by I think Artcraft, they, yeah, they're called Artcraft and they have a digital art course and they wanted me, you know, to sponsor me. Um, so I said, yeah, why, I mean, I want to learn to do digital art. So, you know, um, I'm actually interested in that course. And so I'm currently doing this course and it's a mentored lesson. So it's over eight weeks, I think. And so we have homeworks every week and, um, <clears throat> my cat needs a bit of a cuddle. 
So we have um, we have homework every week and we learn to draw digitally um, and yeah it's it's been quite the ride and it's quite interesting. If you are curious about it, as I said I'm sponsored for it so I have a link and you can check it down below. We have a mentor that um, that simply, you know, checks our homework and helps us out to improve. And actually, I learned a lot already, um, also in my traditional work, uh, especially in terms of highlights and shadows. So lights and shadows is always something that I have a bit of difficulty, um, a bit of difficulties to do simply because I come from the sculpting. Um, and in sculpture, you really just focus on shape and colors. And light and shadows are not that important. So uh, in that sense, I find that course has actually been very helpful to me. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure why I'm talking to you about that. <laughs> kind of missed the thread. Um, I, I lost, not missed, I lost the thread of of the talking. Why, did, why am I talking about digital art? I don't know. Oh yeah! Because even in digital art, you always start with a pencil sketch. So it's not a real pencil, of course, it's a pencil brush. and uh, But you always have a layer of a sketch. And then you have the next layer is going to be the actual drawing. And then you have layers for colors and layers for lights and shadows and whatnot. Um, so uh, you do layer up your, um, your artwork. And in real life, it's kind of the same. You do layer up... Uh, the layers. So you start with a pencil sketch and then you do, you go over it with your ink and then you add colors with watercolors and you layer the colors one by one. Uh, so uh, in that sense it's very similar I think. Only in real life you cannot erase everything <laughs> if you make a mistake. Which you can in digital art. Um, but yeah. Now the next thing I've always want to talk about are watercolors and uh, I know how tempting it is to buy many 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 colors and try many 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 brands uh, because I did that as well. <laughs> um, I do have way too many colors. Um, I'm actually defending myself to buy any new colors and I'm simply going to replace uh, the colors I need once I go through them. Especially on YouTube you see so many art supplies reviews that kind of make you want to buy, to buy more art supplies but you really don't need them. So uh, yeah, I wanted to touch a bit on that. So there are many brands of watercolors and I've tried my fair share of it. Um, I tried Schmincke, I tried Sennelier, Dan Daniel Smith, um, M. Grams, uh, Roman Schmall, what else? Isaro, um, do I have any other? I think that's it. So basically the most expensive, <laughs> the most expensive, best high quality brands that you can find. And I've used them all and uh, the differences are minor but really minor between these brands. Meaning you can buy any of those brands and you're going to be happy and you're going to be able to do great watercolors if you're really serious about them. If you want to just chill and do watercolors, uh, you know, for fun, you're going to be all right with uh, Van Gogh and paints that are technically student grade, but honestly they're pretty good. Um, so if you're like not super, super, if you're just working in a sketchbook or something like that or you know just for yourself and you don't want to invest a lot of money um, into art supplies, at least not for now, then Van Gogh is really good and I'm sure the the Cotman series from Winston Newton as well. I never personally tried them. I know Schmincke Academy is also good because that's what my mom uses. But yeah, it's um, it's just a brand um, and you're not going to see a lot of differences. There are differences, don't get me wrong, there are differences, notable, notable differences. But in my paintings I kind of use all the brands and I just kind of picked the colors I like. Um, and I have my favorites um, and I also know which ones I might not buy again. And, uh, and also I prefer paints in tubes because I mix that in cold porcelain and in my clay work. Um, but yeah, it's not, 
it's not worth it to try all the brands to see by yourself. I think as long as you stick with a high quality brand, uh, I would suggest to go with a more local brand from wherever you live. So if you're in the US, more Daniel Smith or M. Grams because that's going to be cheaper for you. If you're in Germany, Schminke, obviously. If you're in France, then rather go with Sennelier. Um, and uh, Isaro is in Belgium, but then again in Europe, most European brands are more local. Roman Schmal is from Poland, I think, but I might be mistaken. Um, yeah, so just, you know, Winston Newton, UK, with Brexit, actually, that's important. So yeah, if you're in the UK, rather go for Winston Newton, uh, and for the rest of Europe, you can go with Schminke, Sennelier, whatnot. So, but don't overthink it. Just take a few colors. You don't really need like thousands. I know how, I know how wonderful it is to see like a rainbow of colors, uh, but from personal experience, and because I kind of fell into that trap of wanting all the colors, you end up with so many colors and you don't really know anymore which one to mix, which ones to use. And eventually you end up using just a small eight, maybe ten at best. Um, so yeah, don't go overboard. Um, I think one good uh, way to try paints out are dot cards. Um, I personally got a few um, for Christmas. And honestly, that's been very useful to just see, <laughs> you know, how that specific red looks or that specific brown or sepia or whatnot. And uh, I must admit, this kind of helped me a lot to know which um, colors I might replace which with other ones. But yeah, don't, uh, don't put all your money into art supplies because it's not going to make you happy. It's just going to add to the general bulk um, of your art supplies at home. What do what is important, I think, with art supplies is to use them, and uh, that's what is going to be satisfying. And just amass things is not. It's just it's going to be nice the moment you buy them. It's going to be nice the moment you get it, them at home, and the moment you swatch them. And then you're going to feel a little bit a little bit empty and a little bit disappointed in yourself because you just added more stuff <laughs> to your art supplies. So yeah, um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if you need art supplies, of course get them. But um, don't fall into the rainbow trap of art supplies, buying as many colors as you want just, be just because you can if you're not going to use all of them. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, now back to the painting. I always layer colors and um, of course this is my technique or my way of doing things. It's not the right way to do whatever that might be. Uh, I tend to always start with a wash, a light wash of colors. I always do a little sketch of the colors I want in my painting, usually. On, sometimes I know exactly what colors I want, sometimes I don't, and so I just kind of pick colors that go together and I will use those colors in the painting. And I always start with a wash, a very light wash of colors, but everywhere on the painting to kind of know where I'm going. And then I gradually build up the vibrancy of the colors. I simply go over it and add more pigments, basically, through the watercolors. Um, until I have a result that I like. So um, yeah, you can see in this video how you really add things up. Um, I actually had about six hours of, <laughs> yeah, six hours of footage just for this video, um, which is a lot. I'm not going to do this again, but at least you can really see almost everything. At the end, I had to cut it a bit short because it was just getting so much. My I had all my SD cards were shock full and I was starting to get worried about like the amount of footage I was going to have just for one video. Um, but yeah, at least you can really see, um, you know, the phases I go through um, during the process. And I tend to, again, I make a very light wash and this is going to be the light everywhere. And then I go in and I will add more colors and then shadows, more colors and then more shadows. And I really do it very slowly. I'm not 
I'm not very adventurous <laughs> when it comes to painting and I prefer to really gradually do it step by step baby step by baby step until I get just the right color I want. Um, I know some people are much more bolder, you know, and they go in there and they know I want a bright orange or I want a bright yellow and they go and paint, but I'm just too scared to do that. And I prefer, you know, to kind of do it more gradually um, so uh, I know where I'm going and it's uh, less scary for me. And I'm not afraid to use gouache either uh, when I know I want to have certain highlights over others and I know it's going to be easier. So for instance, here on um, this, on my octopus, later on, I'm going to add gouache uh, to add all over the body, small dots of yellow and orange. On another note, I don't, I don't know if you recall, but I was talking about brushes a few videos back and I was wondering, you know, uh, what is like the best way of, of the best brushes to use? Um, are vegan brushes really better than natural hair brushes because you know they're made out of plastic and whatnot? But I had I, I bought a few synthetic brushes for watercolors and I actually love them. Um, I think they um, the point seems to stand. Uh, better, like it stains really pointy, whereas with natural brushes it tends to go more, to become more rounded, which is interesting in other ways, but I have to say I really have been enjoying my synthetic brushes a lot, and I'm actually using mostly a synthetic brush for today's painting, so yeah, this has been um, something I've been really enjoying. My cat... <laughs> My cat really needs to cuddle today. My cat is weird that way in the sense that when I talk to the camera, I think he doesn't understand what I'm doing. So he always comes to me and he wants to cuddle. I think it's probably partly jealousy and partly he just wants all the attention. So uh, yeah, whenever I'm recording a video or doing something, he's going to start meowing and he's going to start coming to me and he just wants to be there. <laughs> so yeah, that's my cat, Roger. Oh. Uh, where was I? Yeah, um, building up basically. <laughs> Also, the question came up in a group chat I had where I'm um, with a bunch of artists and the question of knowing when to finish an artwork. And I think it's always a bit of a fine line um, when you know when to finish. Um, as if you overdo it, then it's too much. But if you stop too early, then it's not finished. So finishing an artwork is never that easy, uh, but I, I think um, there's two things to keep in mind. You have to kind of feel it, you have to follow your gut, because in the end it's your artwork, so it has to be an expression of your vision and yourself. Um, and you might not be always agreeing with other people on when an artwork is finished. Some people like to leave it fairly unfinished and some people like to put a lot of details into it. So um, that's really up to the artist to decide. So really trust your gut. That's the first advice I would have, uh, I would have to you. Um, and the second advice is to not overthink it. Um, you're going to do a lot of artworks in your lifetime. Most of them are just going to be okay. Uh, a few of them are going to be impressive and maybe if you're lucky you're going to do one or two masterpieces. But for the most of it, you know, it's just going to be another artwork. Um, so, you know, you have to play it down a bit. It doesn't matter all that much. If you're going to mess it up, then just so be it. Move on, um, start another artwork. I think um, one of the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous things as an artist is to overplay your own work and to think that every artwork you're going to do is important or is going to be magnificent. It's not. <laughs> the reality of it is that most artworks are going to be just, sorry, yeah, that most of the artworks you're going to do are just going to be, you know, average, you know, average in the sea of artworks being done today in contemporary art. Uh, you, you're just going to do one in so many. It's not going to be 
amazing and uh, once in a while you know um, because you put so much work in it it's going to be wow but uh, for the most part just don't overthink it go with your gut if it's if you feel it's finished then finish it now i was talking before about gouache and adding gouache details and this is exactly what i'm doing right now on uh, the painting um, or almost no I started sorry <laughs> checking the video at the same time then I'm talking I'm actually recording it extra because I was completely off the timeline before and yeah I simply am adding small details of gouache over the blue so I knew from the start so it's not um, it's not a last minute decision I knew before starting this painting that I wanted the octopus to be blue as a base color and to have all his texture details be in orange and yellows and so I knew I was going to use gouache and this is what I do. I really like to use gouache with watercolors because sometimes I really want to add a complementary color over an already existing color and in very small details and it's just so much easier to do that with gouache than to go through the hassle of either using, you know, masking fluid or um, being very careful with your brush and, you know, do some detouring, which is just kind of time consuming. So uh, I don't really see the point uh, and I simply use gouache. So uh, um, I think uh, if you're using watercolors and if um, it's something that you enjoy, but you also uh, like to add that, those complementary colors, details at the end, then gouache might be something you, um, could be interested in maybe maybe not uh, but yeah that's how I do it I often finish my sculptures not sculptures <laughs> although of course in sculptures I also add color details at the end but yeah my watercolor paintings I think most of them not all of them but uh, most of them I uh, add gouache uh, towards uh, the end um, because it's opaque you know simple simple as that and another addition to this painting in terms of media and details is that I finished my painting with colored pencils. Now I have... Uh, colored pencils are a relatively new material for me to use in my paintings. I don't know if you recall, but I make this huge drawing only with colored pencils. Uh, I posted about it on my YouTube channel, so you might want to check it out if you want to learn more about colored pencils. But yeah, and now I have them in my repertoire and I really wanted to use them at the end because I didn't quite like the shadows that I did on this painting. They were too brownish and I wanted cool shadows. And so I decided to go over the shadows with an indigo colored pencil to bring back the shadows in the cool tones um, and in a very easy, fast way. I just felt like doing it with colored pencils instead of watercolors. Of course you could have done it with watercolors only, but um, yeah, I don't know, I really have been enjoying adding uh, that specific texture of colored pencils in the end, at the end of my watercolor paintings. Um, and I really want to explore um, that added mixed media to it. I think mixed media is really a very contemporary way of doing artworks. We have an easy access to a wide variety of media nowadays. Um, and uh, we do like to try, most artists do like to try different medias. And uh, that way it's actually quite easy to, you know, mix them and um, use them for their specificities in your final artworks. So I think that's a great way to go at it. Yes, and we are finally ending this video. We are finally arriving at the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I very much hope you enjoyed the talking about the painting. I really hope it was helpful. I tried to really go into details on how I work and how my approach is. And uh, yeah, try to make it um, worth your time, um, your, worth your watch and listen time. And maybe I had the chance to follow you in your own artwork, in your own work today. And maybe you were just a wee bit inspired <laughs> by my talking and by my painting in your own artwork. Um, and uh, yeah, I really wish you a lovely day. 
thank you so much for watching if you haven't already maybe subscribe and you know click comment share you know all that kind of stuff and uh yeah i really hope to see you in my next video thank you so much and bye